Patrick Owens here, and today I'm joined by GM3, Gerald Mia Sharp III, who is back in action on Saturday night, facing Bruno Silva. Gerald, great to sit down and chat. How are things with you today? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you for thank you for the re- reciprocal nature of your of your um, politeness. Um, a lot, a lot of fighters don't, so it's very nice of you. Um, first and foremost, we're back in back in action on Saturday night. Bruno Silva. I'll I'll get straight down to the nitty gritty. Uh, what does your opponent do well, and what do you think you do better than your opponent? Um, uh, I think he he's got really good power. Right, he's not. He doesn't look like he's the fastest striker. He's definitely not slow, mm. but. I think he makes his bread and butter off it. He, he's got some stopping power in his punches, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, he's very good at using his length to its utmost effect. And uh, he's not afraid to get in there and throw. And I think, um, you know, if you looked on paper, I guess you could say he might have a little more stopping power or knockout power in his punches. And I'm, I'm probably a little bit slicker with submissions just because like he has a lot of knockouts. I have a lot of submissions. But we we both have done both, right? I I have a body kick knockout in the UFC. You know, I've made plenty of really good strikers and really tough guys in the UFC, you know, wobble and do the chicken dance before by hitting them. So, and he's also submitted people. And he's slick with his grappling. You know what I mean? He's got good takedown defense. Um, He's really good about getting back to his feet. And he's a game guy. So, I think, you know, where we might – excel in different areas somewhat we match up pretty good everywhere and i think it's just going to make for a really fun fight you've kind of alluded to there at least in my opinion that maybe people only view gerald me as a as a grappler maybe as a submission specialist is that something that is true and does that is that something that maybe might get on your nerves might annoy you at times no it doesn't really annoy me but i think people look at statistics a lot and they kind of ignore what has led to those submissions you know what I mean? So, uh, in the and I, and I shouldn't say everybody. There's just a lot of people that do that, and you can't really blame them, right? Because if someone asks me, "How are you going to win?" Well, you know, eight of my nine UFC wins are by submission, so it's kind of hard not to say submission. Mm-hmm. And in that sense, yes, I am a submission specialist. But the way I get there is I hurt people with the stand up. You know what I mean? Uh, I went up against a lot of guys who were undefeated, up and coming, striking specialists, all this stuff. Um, and it's not that I can't take people down, but, you know, I'm more than happy to stand and bang with guys. And then it just so happens that either I can't get them out of there or I see an opening and then I do what I do best and I finish the fight. Uh, in an ideal world, do you prefer fighting or the grapplers or do you kind of like the to and fro of striker versus grappler and kind of wherever the fight takes place, you either had a, a perceived advantage or disadvantage? What do you prefer? Uh, I don't know that I've ever thought about it enough to like... <laughs> The other you know what i mean um yeah i mean the both can be dangerous right because you go against a really good striker there's a you got to close the gap even if they have zero grapple you still got to close the gap you're still in danger of getting knocked out or beat up uh but if you go against a grappler and that's what you want to do um and you both are good at grappling you get a lot of exciting fights that way too because you don't again we wear four ounce gloves you don't have to be a quote-unquote good striker or powerful to knock somebody out so like there's always danger but yeah i don't know that i have a a preference over one or the other okay no problem Uh, i did want to ask about silver as well because he's currently three and one in the ufc Uh, it's obviously it's obviously his only loss coming to now uh upcoming title challenger alex Pereira. um now you and Pereira kind of have very different games in many aspects, but is there anything you can take from his loss against Pereira that you could think you can maybe you can maybe bring into your own skill set? Uh, I don't know that you could take two guys more on the opposite <laughs> end of the spectrum as far as like body type and skill set in the way we approach fights. Because like that is that dude, he's a very good kickboxer. I'm, I, I'm sure he's got like he's got the glory title in kickboxing for sure. I'm sure he has other ones. Um, you know, even watching his stand, he's good. Bray is good, but like he's not the most technical. But he just hits so hard. Like he he cracks guys, and like he's knocked out everybody but Bruno Silva. So obviously, the dude's got a granite chin. I mean, I I'm sure there's enough of it left now, but it's like that dude's putting everybody to sleep with big gloves, and in the UFC, everybody else to sleep. And for Silva to go in there and like stand with him and weather the storm like that. Um, I mean, if anything, it showed me that like 
you know, I shouldn't plan on knocking Silva out, like, unless he did all the groundwork for me, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But, uh, you know, it, the longer you get to see someone fight, you learn some things. But I don't think there's anything that Perea did specifically that I would be able to do, like, at all. Not not just because we have different fight styles, but he like his frame and length are just so different from how I fight. It's, yeah, there's nothing for me there. No disrespect when I say this, but it would be a nice bit of MMA math if you were able to stop Bruno Silva on the feet and Alex Pereira couldn't. That would be a nice bit of like MMA, <laughs> MMA math. Yeah. That would be, yeah, that would be interesting. I I feel like if that happened, I would still be like, I'm pretty sure he did most of the work for me, but like, I'll take it. Yeah, of course. Uh, I did want to mention, because obviously you're coming off the loss in April to Jock Cope, but I kind of wanted to mention 2021 because, kind of correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's probably the best calendar year in your career. Um, first, first of all, do you agree with that? And second of all, kind of what what factors came into play to make that such a successful year for you, despite the know the performances um uh, I, I would have to say it's my most successful year right because i went undefeated uh for three fights in you know arguably the toughest organization in the world mm-hmm. um i mean there are years i've fought more and won more but going three and on the ufc is no small feat and, and in doing that i set a record in the middleweight division for submissions too so that was like two nice little feathers in the cap um but a lot of that was like I, you know, I'm still hungry, but I was very hungry then, especially I was coming off two, you know, really bad losses. Um, I had to take some time, and like really just kind of focus on myself and not, not worry about anything else, just being as good as I can be. Like, don't worry about what your opponent does. Don't train for a specific style of fight. Just take the tools you have and, you know, sharpen the ax, so to speak, mm-hmm. and then kind of like figure it out from there. Because at this point, you know, I'll add, I'll probably still add some new little wrinkles to my game. And there's even stuff that, you know, I can do in the gym that I'm very comfortable with that I haven't shown in fights yet. Mm. You know what I mean? But at this point, I'm pretty much the fighter that I'm going to be. It's just making sure everything's sharp, my reactions are on, and that I'm I'm in good shape and, like, comfortable mentally and physically to, like, show everything that I have to offer. So I think that makes a big difference. And then, you know, had a little bit of a hiccup with the last fight, but I've made some changes and uh, I think I'm ready to show the best version of myself that, you know, anybody's ever seen. I actually, uh, in, at the end of 2021, I made a post on my Instagram of kind of 10 alternate fighters of the year. So maybe guys who perhaps never got the credit for the for the year that they had. I can remember Sergio Pettis, for example, was on that list. Uh, but your name was kind of, Ricky Simone was on there as well, but your name was was on there kind of at the end of it. And I don't think people kind of appreciated the year that you had in terms of the calendar year. Um, do you think you, I mean, maybe maybe you might say you don't, you don't necessarily get the respect you deserve, but do you feel like you got the respect that you deserve for that actual calendar year and kind of how you turned that around, as you mentioned with the, the back-to-back losses prior? Um. Uh, actually, I th- I think I did. You know what I mean? I I understand what you're saying too, right? Because I'm not I'm not not popular. You know what I mean? Like I got a pretty decent following. I feel like, especially for people that are more like the hardcore fans, because mm-hmm. I have so many fights and I've been around for a while. But um, you know, and there were some other people that they did really recognize it, and I got praised for it, right? Like uh, I talked to John Anik and Kenny Florian about some of the year I was having, and heard him, you know, talk about it before, and like uh, Aaron Bronstetter. And James Lynch, I'm pretty sure, mentioned it in, like, a, you know, some different people definitely, you know, if you follow closely kind of the MMA and MMA media sphere, uh, I felt like I got more love than I usually get for stuff like that. And, like, people were bringing stuff up like that, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, but I'm not, like, you know, I'm to this point, I haven't had any notoriety or anything like that of somebody who's, like, a, kind of like a star, which is fine. You know what I mean? Not everybody can get that. And I'm, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not, I don't have a perfect record. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm in good shape, but I don't look like crazy. You know what I mean? Like mm. you saw test me that often. Cause they're like, ah, he's fine. You know, <laughs> like I don't look like I'm yoked out of my mind. So I'm, I'm just kind of, it's funny. Like a lot of people like, because they're like, yeah, he's a regular guy. But mm. that being that, like that doesn't put me uh, to that next exit step until you know i start making myself undeniable and beating everybody and they're like oh we should you know you can actually be a normal person and do this you don't have to be like some 
extra crazy person or like have some whatever you know put it out there and another thing that doesn't help me either uh is that like i'm just an american and like we don't back our own Mm. at all unless you're winning everything (laughs) you guys are lucky because if you come from literally anywhere else in the world and you like fly that flag your people will ride for you in america they're like oh yeah you lost you suck don't don't come back we don't want to talk to you why this might be it sound like an obvious question because I had the had Jeremy Stevens kind of give me a similar story. I've had multiple fighters talk about this about the American fan base kind of almost supports non Americans more than their own. Is, yeah. is that is that kind of a function of the size of the country? Is that maybe the the politics or the social aspects of the country? Why do why do you think American MMA fans maybe don't support American fighters the way they should? I know that's uh, a very I know it's a very difficult question to ask off the spot, but. I don't know. I I think that it's probably a lot of things. I think one thing would be definitely uh, oversaturation of the market, so to speak. Like most, you know, even in the UFC, most guys, it's US or American rather based company. So Mm. most from here and, uh, you know, America is still a pretty like big center worldwide for like culture and exporting culture and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, nobody wants to like root on the big kid on the block. So it's like, if you come from the U S we have a lot of opportunities and things that m- maybe other people don't have. So it's like, why, you know, why are you going to basically, why are you going to root for like the spoiled rich kid? You know what mm. I mean? Um, but then like you come from somewhere else, I think there's another side of that too, where, you know, if there's not as many fighters from where you're from or they're, you know, just much more, uh, feverishly into sports like that they're going to get behind their own you yeah. know what i mean because like if you're you know the only things in america that people really get into like that right now are like football and baseball mm-hmm. and even then you kind of got to be a big deal but we just don't have that same fan base for other sports you know especially combat sports 100 mm-hmm. percent. yeah i probably would be inclined to agree um i just want to check as well i wanted to check the record because if memory serves this is going to be your 50th Pro MMA, pro MMA fight? Yeah, no, I've I, I definitely have some that aren't on my record, and I can't man, I can't even remember now. I feel like maybe some got added on after they weren't there for a while, uh, but I feel like I had maybe four or five that fights that I've had that weren't listed before. So you know, for sure, this is like quote unquote the fiftieth, but I've probably had more than fifty at this point. Well, for the sake of my question, let's pretend you've had 50. Um, but this is a very big milestone in any in any fighter's career to get to the n- number 50 mark. So I guess now all this time and all the all the you know the moments that you've had throughout your career, could you kind of reflect on your career and kind of what you've accomplished at this point and maybe what you want to accomplish in the future post post big five oh? Uh I mean I can't briefly, but you know, right <laughs> now I feel like I've still got four or five good years in me, so I'm not, you know. Until maybe after fights, you know, you kind of stop and smell the roses, so to speak, for a quick second. But uh, when I when I leave the gloves in the octagon, then I'll probably have a better answer for that question. Fair enough. I did want to ask about this, and I kind of want to frame this question with the utmost respect. Um, what what at this point in your career, what kind of is the essential goal? And I'm, and what I mean by that is, just, is the ultimate goal still the world title fight, the world, the world title, or is it more, you know, other maybe uh, accomplishments in terms of places to fight, records to break? What kind of are the essential goals for you in your left in your career? Uh, well, I mean, if anyone says anything different, they're lying. But first and foremost is to make enough money to like support me and my family well after fighting. You know what I mean? Like, idol and all this other stuff. Like, that's BS. The first thing is making as much money as you can. Uh, the second is like, yeah, I still. I still would like to hold UFC gold. You know what I mean? I'm not in any position, obviously, right now to do that. Um, if you look at my record overall and my UFC record, not too many guys have had, like, uh, you know, an up and down road like that and gone on to get it, but I still think I can do it. Um, if it comes to the point that it's just not attainable in the time I have, then I'm going to, you know, try to extend – uh, you know, the submission record that I do have, if I can, and just have the most exciting and memorable fights possible, you know what I mean? And just mm. continue to, to make a name for myself. But, you know, I really would like to put myself in a position to get, you know, at least get a shot at the title. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I'd like to then finish very quickly by talking about an upcoming fight featuring one of your uh, previous opponents, um, Chumaya versus Diaz. Gerald, obviously, you fought one of those guys. Uh, it never went your way, but um, what do you expect from that upcoming bout? What do you expect to see happen at UFC yeah. 279? I wouldn't have called that one much of a fight, but yeah, no, I, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it could go a lot of different ways. I. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but it could go a couple different ways. Um, if Hamzat decides to stand up with Nate for a little bit, I mean, he's got good power, so, like, he could put his lights out, obviously. But Diaz is tough, and if you let him hang around enough, especially if it ends up being a five-round fight, uh, you're kind of playing with fire. Um, but that being said, it, you know, if he's smart, I, I would think if he listens to his coaches, follows his game plan, especially because on the last fight, he had said in, uh, or I had seen that he had said in interviews that he didn't listen to his coaches that well, or he felt mm -hmm. he hadn't rather. So if that was the case, the last one, I would, I would think, and I could be wrong, but I would think he would try to make it a point to follow whatever they have laid out for him a little bit closer. And to me, that would be strike enough to find an opening and get a takedown and then get to that, you know, get him to a turtle position because Diaz can play guard pretty well still. Not that I think that would be a great idea, but if Hamza can like put some hands on him, get a takedown and get to the back and either to that wrestle ride position or just take the back, you know, I think he could make it a pretty easy night for himself. That being said, you know, if they decide to stay on the feet, I mean, he is is tough. He, he gives a lot of people a lot harder time than most people expect. Like he's a legit dude. So, you know, uh, it could be, you could see Hamza like the the steam engine roll over another guy, or you could see him go out there and throw caution to the wind and give you know fans another barn burner. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I've got one final question for you, Gerald, and this is kind of off the cuff and it's not MMA related, but I've never kind of noticed this prior to jumping on with you today. But we kind of have a little bit of a similar look. I don't know if you agree or disagree. We've got got a little bit of ginger in our beards, perhaps a little bit of strawberry blonde. We've both got the blue eyes. Um, do you have any ancestral roots in Liverpool? Perhaps, you know, maybe we have we have family ties. What, what do you think? I don't know about Liverpool specifically, but I know I, I do have uh, some ancestry dating back to the to the UK in general. Doesn't really say or where from, but yeah, I always got, I have like a weirdest multicolored beard. Like if you see it from in the light or from afar, it's like, you know, blonde or light brownish really. But the closer you get in, it gets like a little more red, mm. like, the closer in towards like my mouth and stuff. And yeah, no, I got blue eyes and like, you know, you got maybe got a little more red than I do, but yeah, similar look. Maybe that's what makes me so tough is deep down. I'm a scouser. I may be scouser. I was going to say that sounds like Scott. Sound like, sound like uh, Scottish to, to me. Could be that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today. It was a great, great uh, honor to sit down and chat with you today. And I wish you the best of luck for Saturday night. All right, man. I appreciate you. Before we finish, Gerald, how can people find you on social media and any sponsors you'd like to plug? The last few floor is yours for the final word. Oh, um, yeah. You try to type in my name and spell it halfway correct. You'll find all my social media. And uh, yeah, shout out to all my sponsors. Shout out to Killcliff FC. This first camp has been amazing. And uh, shout out to Fresh and Lean. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.